Hey, this is Lorena, and I wanted to do a block that I used in a swap block group that I did just recently on Lorena's Quilting Facebook group. Yes, I have a Facebook group, and I had some wonderful ladies ask me if I would make or start a swap block. This was my first time. I've never done one, and so one of the ladies shared with me this quilt block, and I went ahead, and on my program, I designed the block and had the sizes and all that stuff, and I also made a quilt top for it. So... There was 12 ladies that joined with me and they we all picked a certain color and I will share all those beautiful blocks that they did at the end of the video. I'm just so thankful for this group. They were a lot of fun. This was my first time doing it. So today we're doing the quilt block. Okay, so let's keep, let's get block making. My color was peach. If you're interested in making this block, by the way, I have the block size and pattern all of this quilting Facebook group and also the measurements on how to make the whole quilt top. So it's free, it's a free pattern. You just have to join and there's no benefit for me to have you join, but you know, you get free patterns. And then you get to get to see, you get to see what's going on when I don't post here. I get to post more on Lorena's Quilting Facebook group more, cause it's easier. It's not as much work. So let's talk about the block. You're gonna need three fabrics of the same color a dark fabric a medium colored fabric and a light fabric and you want the darkest to be pretty dark and you also want your lights to be pretty light you don't want them to kind of blend together you want to see that difference so my color was peach and so these are my three colors that I am using to make the block you're also going to need one background fabric of one color and I chose gray you could use white or black or gray or however you want but I chose gray I ended up working on half square triangles so the half square triangles need to be four and a half by four and a half there's so many ways to make half square triangles, but this is my favorite way. So you're gonna cut yourself about two background fabrics, five by five, which mine was gray, and you're gonna cut yourself two medium tone colors, five by five. Now what you're gonna do to make those half square triangles, you're gonna kiss those suckers and draw a center line and then sew a fourth on each side of the line. So you see me sewing a fourth all the way on one side and then I turn the fabric around and sew the fourth all the way on the other side. And then you cut the center line and then you open it and you have two half square triangles. You need to have four of those to make this block. After you cut your half square triangles, you're gonna go ahead and iron them open. I iron towards the dark. I do not do open seams. Ugh. More work, why? why <laughs> no and then I went and got my ruler I have a pretty good size five by five ruler on the diagonal you're gonna find four and a half and you're gonna trim the half square triangles to the size four and a half and I did that on all four pieces yes. now we're gonna do flying geese <laughs> I'm not that good at making flying geese and I can fess up to it. I'm not a pro piecer as my friend Melanie. I used to hate piecing. So flying geese, they're not my favorite. But we're gonna show you two ways and this is one of my favorite ways to do it. So we're gonna show that first. I use a lock block flying geese ruler. Yes, that's what this is. Ta -da. It's a shortcut, it, it's a flying geese saver. If you're gonna use this ruler, your pieces, you're gonna need eight pieces, two and three fourths by two and three fourths squares, and you're gonna need eight of those pieces, and you're gonna need four pieces that are two and three fourths by four and three fourths, yes. And you're gonna need four of those pieces. Are you there? Are you paying attention? Are you okay? Please stay with me. <laughs> All right, then you're gonna go ahead and on your two and three fourths by four and three fourths, you're gonna lay your square on one of the edges of the side and draw a diagonal. And then you're gonna sew on that diagonal line. After that, you're gonna trim off the excess material and kind of, I use that for like tail enders. And then you're gonna iron towards the dark. 
or towards the center. It doesn't matter. I like ironing it towards the center, okay? Then you're gonna get your other two and three fourths by two and three fourths, and you're going to add another piece to that edge that has a diagonal line going upwards towards what you did already. Sew on that line, trim off the excess, and fold it over, and now you have your beautiful flying geese. Now these are a little bit oversized, so that's when this beautiful ruler comes into play <laughs> and you're gonna go ahead and lay that on your material after it's been ironed and then you're gonna kind of lock it in that's why it's called lock block this locks in yeah I'll show you and then you're gonna trim all the way around and now you should have a two and a half by four and a half now you're gonna need four of those you're probably like Lorena I don't want to buy a ruler and I understand some of us don't want to buy extra things. So this is how you can make flying geese um, without having to purchase anything. Okay, throw that away. So you're gonna cut your squares two and a half by two and a half, and that's your darkest fabric. And then you're gonna use your background fabric and cut that two and a half by four and a half. Then you're gonna draw diagonal lines and kiss I usually say kiss the fabrics together. but I really mean is you're gonna face the two fabrics facing each other and you're gonna put it on the edge of that two and a half by four and a half. And on that diagonal line, you're gonna go ahead and sew. You're gonna do the same exact thing as we did on the lock block section. Put another square on the corner, have a diagonal line, sew on that diagonal line, cut off the extra fabric, open those seams and iron and there you have your flying geese one of the reasons why i don't like making flying geese this way is because a lot of times my half square triangles warp or they're not i don't know they just don't come out as clean and i have to finagle going over that seam and making sure i don't lose that point but hey you don't have to buy anything and it works it just works okay in the midst of making all your half square triangles and your flying geese, you're also going to need to have a couple other pieces cut. You're gonna need your lightest colored piece, which mine is a light peach. You need it cut two and a half by four and a half, and you need four of those pieces. And then you need a center square, which I believe is four and a half by four and a half, and that's your background color. It's time to go ahead and put the block together. So you're gonna have a half square triangle facing inward and your flying geese and your strip. What you're gonna do is you're gonna sew your flying geese and your lightest color together and that should end up being almost like a four and a half by four and a half square. After you sew all four of those pieces, you're ready to build the quilt block. And now you can sew your block from top to bottom, from left to right, from right to left, or bottom to up. It's up to you, it doesn't matter. As long as you stay consistent and don't get confused when you're piecing them, because it happens to me. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go, I usually start left to right, top to bottom. So I'm gonna get my Hasgrid triangle and my flying geese section, and I'm gonna make sure, like in my triangle section and my flying geese points, that they are sitting nice and snug together. And when I sew them, when I'm finishing and I'm opening it up, that I have a fourth angle and that you have a beautiful V. I love pinning. Let me tell you, pinning saves you from having to undo and redo. All right, so this is what the quilt block looks like. It's a 12 and a half by 12 and a half block. When it is a finished block within the quilt, it's gonna be 12 by 12. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and share pictures of my beautiful group ladies and the blocks that they uh, 
they sent me these are already sent blocks to me there's a couple that are missing it's they've been delayed due to the fact that their quilt shops in their state were closed so and uh, yeah it was really a great group I'm really learning a lot with these ladies and so let's showcase uh, their work and also too I'm gonna showcase one of the ladies who didn't make it when we decided to do the quilt swap but she went ahead and took the pattern and already finished the quilt <laughs> i hope you like this video and i'll see you on the next one bye